I am one with the force and the force is with me. I am one with the force and the force is with me. I am one with the force and the force is with me. I am one with the force and the force is with me. Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of the Jamie Hughes Show. My name as always is Jamie Hughes and today I'm going to be giving you my review of Rogue One, a Star Wars story. Rogue One stars Felicity Jones, Diego Luna, Mads Nicholson, Forrest Whitaker and is directed by Gareth Edwards. Before I jump into this review I do want to show you this really quick if I can get it in focus. I went to the midnight screening last night of it and I got this very very cool poster uh, from the IMAX screening in Cinewell Broughton so thank you very much for that, it's very cool. Uh, you can collect these, there was some last night, there's some on Christmas Eve and there's some on New Year's Eve as well. So do go and check out an IMAX if you get the chance because you get a very cool poster like this. Now before I jump into this review as always, uh, I do want to try and keep this one relatively spoiler free but a few spoilers may slip out. So if you haven't seen Rogue One yet, don't watch this video because you've been warned there may be some spoilers. Rogue One tells the story of Jyn Ursa and her merry band of rebels as they take on the Galactic Empire in their bid to try and steal the plans for the original Death Star. Okay, now let's get on to the review. My general overview of this film is that it is a slow build, I will admit this. I, I was a little bit worried to start off with. It does, um, the story, I was a little bit shaky and a little bit tentative about the story is in the first sort of half an hour or so, the first act of the film, it, I was, wasn't really gelling with this story. But then as it progressed, I got more invested uh, and it just grew and grew into this really great story and it was really great storytelling from the writers uh, and the actors to carry this story through and towards the end, I'm not going to lie, right at the end, the very end scene, a little goofy smile on my face, kind of like this one now, a little bit of a nostalgic tear in my eye and it left me feeling, uh, it left me leaving the cinema feeling so uh, happy and it was just great knowing that this whole new Star Wars universe that Disney are creating is in safe hands. So let me jump into the more specific things that I did like and didn't really like about this film because it is not a perfect film in any sense of the word. Uh, there are flaws in it which I will address openly in this review. But one of the things I wanted to point out, um, Jesus, Mary and Joseph and all of the bloody Jedi in the world, the CGI in this movie is second to none. And if, if if this was like almost like a template for what we're going to see uh, continually going forward in episode 8 and the Han Solo um, standalone film, Jesus, we're in great safe hands. I mean, The Force Awakens was great, but this was a whole nother level. Um, and I really enjoyed the CGI. It, it captured my imagination perfectly. It was, oh, I don't, I just can't use enough superlatives to say how amazing it was, but to, um, to complement that well, uh, they used a lot of prosthetics uh, in really close-up scenes, and that worked as well, uh, and I really love that about The Force Awakened, and I love that about Rogue One, is that it did have that nice feel, uh, paying homage to the original Star Wars trilogy, and yeah, the CGI blew me away, it is fantastic, and it just keeps getting better and better, uh, and I can't wait to see what else they've got in store, but... Wait, it's not all good on the CGI front. Let me let me um, address this um, big old grey elephant in the room. Um, they they brought back again. This is a little spoiler. Sorry if you I did say try and keep it spoiler free, but just before I jump into this point, this is a spoiler. Um, so yeah, you might want to skip ahead like thirty seconds in this review. Um, they brought back Grandma Tarkin, which I thought was great, but he was CGI'd, and there was points where I found it jarring, and it took away from. Uh, my perspective uh, and I, it, I don't know it kind of took my attention away because I knew it was CGI so I would have liked to have seen him in a smaller capacity I think he was used quite a lot throughout the film and yeah it didn't really it didn't really help my perception as I said it just it didn't feel there was something jarring about it and on that note I'm gonna make my most controversial point here uh, I didn't really like Vader's inclusion in the film um, something felt off about him I don't know if it was James Earl Jones. I think it was just the voice sounded too clear. Like it was, it, it didn't really have, apart from the very end scene, it, when he it, when he first goes to see the guy, um, really great homage to the to the later trilogy because his base is on a lava, it's based on a lava planet. That was great. Um, but yeah, when he comes out in that scene, uh, I just didn't feel threatened by him. I didn't feel scared. Um, I just don't know where it was, but 
Um, the voice sounded too clear. Um, it sounded too polished, whereas in the original it just sounded a bit rougher. Um, yeah, and it just didn't really connect with me, so I didn't really like um, Vader's involvement in the film, but I thought it was good that he didn't... He wasn't overused, so because I didn't like it and it was only there in small amounts, I could let it go. But um, I'd love to know your opinion on this because, as I say, Vader is such a huge character in the Star Wars universe. What did you think about his inclusion in Rogue One? Let me know down in the comments below. As I said earlier on in this review, this story does get a lot better in this film. It um, When it starts off, it, it's kind of a little bit di disjointed in places. Um, and they throw a lot of characters at you in a lot of scenes, like early on. But once you kind of take a deep breath, and let it all out and you can really start connecting with these characters and it kind of slows the pace again which is great because you've got time to as i said connect with these characters and yeah the, the characters move this story forward really well um they weren't over the top cheesy characters they all worked and they all had a specific reason to be there uh, i did have a few questions about the characters which didn't get answered which i was a bit gutted but again it was it was just nice to see these characters have depth where you're thinking about where their origins and their backstory which i thought was again was really great because it kept me guessing all the way through the film and that's what i liked about this film as well is that the fact that you knew what was going to happen because as i said this has happened before all the other star wars films but at no point did this ever become predictable did it ever become stale and it kept my attention all the way through this film i just bloody i always say it a lot but i bloody love this film it was great and especially that end scene and that end sequence the way all of the f the film ties together it was just it was great storytelling and it, it i i applaud everyone at the star wars creative team that helped make this film because it was fan bloody tastic one of the I, I just mentioned the characters really quickly there but one of the things i didn't like um, but I did like at the same time, uh, and I'll explain a little bit more in detail, was the fact that they had um, sort of cameos and Easter eggs and references to the original Star Wars trilogy, which worked in some points, but I didn't think worked in others. Um, again, a little bit of a spoiler is coming up here for who appears in it. Um, like, C-3PO and R2-D2 just turned up halfway through the film, very briefly, but that didn't really fit. It didn't, like... It felt like they were just in there for the sake of throwing them in there for a cameo. Same with the guys from Moss Eisley Cantina. They make an appearance. And again, that just felt a little bit forced. But the characters, um, like Princess Leia's father, he worked in it because he worked in the story because you could believe that he was supposed to be there because we knew he was like a, a, he was a rebel general. So that worked. Um, the lady, I can't remember her name, with the, with the gingery hair, She's in the original films, that worked. A lot of them worked, but a few of them just felt a little bit forced, if you'll pardon the pun. But it does, again, it just doesn't take away from the whole uh, main characters. Uh, they were they were great, as I said. Um, and if I'm gonna sum this up really quickly towards the end, I'm coming to the end of this review, sorry, it's been a long one. Um, but the way I would feel, um, summarize this film is that it is almost like the Magnificent Seven set in space. It is fantastic, it is a really great, fun ride as i said it does have its flaws but um you can see past them uh, as i said i didn't really have a lot of bad stuff to say about it it was a lot of it is my personal opinion stuff i didn't like people are gonna love um and that's what i would like to know please let me know what you thought about star wars rogue one down in the comments below do you agree with what i said do you disagree um let's start a conversation about this film because it is gonna be a big talking point for a while um, so yeah, thank you very much for watching this episode of The Jamie Hughes Show. I hope you've enjoyed it. I've enjoyed making it because I bloody love Star Wars. Um, as always, if you did enjoy this video, please leave a like, please comment, please share and subscribe or you will be taken to the dark side. Um, thank you very much for watching. I've been Jamie Hughes. This has been The Jamie Hughes Show. I'll see you in the next episode. Choo, tra. Mm -hmm.